first things first, just to kind of get this out of the way, I feel like I have to be upfront with this stuff, especially considering the latest developments that have been happening with Bobby Lee Kalila going on H3 podcasts and telling Ethan Klein and his missus about what's going on with him and the comedy store. Let me just be honest and be straight up about this. I'm feeling like I'm starting to really, really not care. And it's starting to really annoy me that I'm caring. Do you know what I mean? It feels like I'm wasting my time listening to this nonsense because it just feels like everybody involved in this story is a complete huge piece of steaming dog crap. If you really look into it, if you don't look into it and you're just looking for it from the outside in, everyone can kind of point out who the bad guy is and that's obviously Brendan. But if you really get down to the nitty gritty of the issue and even look at the host of H3H3, which I'm not really a fan of, Ethan Klein, I've always thought he's a bit of a weapon. And then you look at, you know, Bobby Lee's past and you look at what Kalal has been up to in terms of the relationship with Bobby and his kind of bouts of kind of, you know, slipping in and out of sobriety and whether or not that was caused by some of the issues going on in the relationship. I don't know. I don't care. It's not my business. But all of that, added to what's going on with Brendan as an external thing, it's just really hard to root for anyone in this story. It's really hard to sit there and say, hey, I would like this person to get some sort of comeuppance, this person to get buried, this person to do... It's hard to really think like that, honestly, as a grown-up, because, you know, we've all seen these situations play out in our own lives. We know people who have been cheated on. We know people who have done crazy things to people um, in the name of love. And you know, crappy people exist out there in the world. And sometimes you just got to let them do what crappy people do and let them exist. It's not really for us to um, try to litigate in any sort of meaningful way. And if anything, also, I think, if we really think about it, right, if we really, really, really do think about it, what is really going to change at the end of this? What really is going to change? What is really going to... um how we we're not going to affect anything like nothing good going to come of this like you know most likely if this continues going on most likely they'll end up breaking up in it right one of one of the two couples maybe both um which is not going to be a good thing for anybody included one you know most likely brenda will just just like you know what if brenda will end up being like what if a duck's back and continue doing what he does best most likely bobby lee and Kalada will end up doing what they do best like nothing really good or interesting or life no even like life changing maybe for us as viewers will really happen nothing is going to happen zero so for those people out there wishing or hoping that brendan gets cancelled off the back of this it's not happening he's been grandfathered in by the male oprah and joe rogan who i'm a fan of but let's be real joe rogan's a big deal if he rubber stamps you you're basically guaranteed especially if you've got a good work ethic and work ethnic ethnic actually as brendan would say you're definitely guaranteed a career you're basically set for life so that's not going anywhere you know if brian callan can survive a rape allegation brendan can survive a bit of you know um what do you call it an extramarital affair here or there what else is going to happen? Um, I can think of what a scenario people are looking for that he gets ousted or somehow excommunicated by the LA comedy scene. Not happening either because, like I said, he got grandfathered in by Joe Rogan. So, and I'm assuming in LA too, even though we don't think he's a big deal, he's probably a big deal in that little scene there. So that's not going to change. What else people want to see change? The podcast implodes. Not happening right it makes money makes bucket loads of cash they've got ads coming out of their ass even though they do a horrible job of it it's not going to change anything um what do people want maybe one people want to see maybe the mexican leave brendan that's not happening either if you know anything about you know people from that kind of part of the country they are they take the way they view relationships is completely different to how we may view them as somewhat european western europe you know western hemisphere type people then she's not leaving under any circumstance unless maybe he goes out and impregnates somebody else and even then i would not i wouldn't say that's guaranteed so that's not gonna happen she's not going anywhere um what else Joe Rogan is communicating him not happening either the Joe Rogan thing i've long hypothesized that most likely joe probably felt really guilty about convincing brendan to basically quit the ufc right he's one thing that he kind of finally became pro in in terms of athletic sports or professional sports sorry 
and he probably felt as if that podcast was maybe a bit too harsh. He probably regretted saying that on air. And I felt like myself, my own little theory was that Joe kind of made a little promise to himself that he'd do everything in his power to make sure Brendan landed on his feet. And the way he did that was obviously having him on the show, giving him a platform. And then mixed with Brendan's work ethic, ethnic at the, at the beginning, and obviously having a good show with Friday the Kid when they first started and the, you know, the kind of bond he had with Brendan, they went from, you know, from strength to strength. So I don't see Joe ditching Brendan anytime soon because because that legitimately is kind of like his pet project that he was able to kind of help get on his feet after he felt like he'd messed up. So that's not going to happen. So all these scenarios that people are wishing for aren't going to happen. So maybe we're just doing this for some sort of morbid, you know, kind of entertainment. And I know I am getting some entertainment from it, but I've got to be honest, man, when I was listening and watching the live stream, you know, live when it was happening, it was just making me so sad. It was bumming me out because like, you know, it's just a whole bunch of bullshit happening to people in real time that we don't have any effect on that most likely is going to end in tears and we're all kind of watching it with popcorn. You know what I mean? Smiling and hoping something really fucked up happened. It's really awful. And now I just saw a clip of flipping Brendan on um, his show, um, the shop show, the MMA show he's got, and he clearly looks wasted, like he's been up all night, drinking beers, like... And here we are, it, you know, reveling in people's misery. It's absolutely mad, isn't it? And then the other side of me also is like, it also makes you have this weird, um, you get this weird, I wouldn't say resentment. It's only resentment. What's it kind of feeling? I think if you watch this stuff too much, right, it, it's similar to like watching, you know, Dark Side Phil and Wings of Redemption, all those kind of low cows guys like um Boogie, whatever his name is, right? And and the other black dude, I forgot his name, right? Um, low to God. When you watch their content too much, you can sometimes get I would is it is it resentment? Maybe it's resentment, maybe it's just, I don't know what it is. It's a feeling that you feel you're like, how is it possible that somebody so reprehensible, someone so unlikable is able to make such a great career for themselves, you know, creating content online when they're clearly a bad person, right? They have real bad intent or they're kind of manipulating the audience, whatever you may think about the people, whatever you kind of judge them, how you review them. And it can maybe sometimes maybe help, it can maybe make you question humanity, but unfortunately, you know, we have to kind of exist in the world as it is, as opposed to trying to exist in the world of our kind of, of our imagination, of our hope. And, you know, there are monsters and awful people out there doing pretty well for themselves. It's just a fact of life. It just is what it is. Some people don't get the comeuppance that you think they should be getting. Some people are able, like, you know, DSP is a good example, flipping 14 years content creation as he keeps banging on about. And he's been begging the entire time, making 100K plus per year. And you could say, yeah, his life is somewhat, you know, maybe sad because he's a shut-in and because he begs for tips and whatnot. Yeah, whatever. But if you watch his content too much and you see how much of a garbage human being he is, yet he has all these, oh, you'd say trappings or somewhat of successful life. It can sometimes bum you out and put you in a bit of a funk that's kind of hard to get out of. And then you end up watching him for what? Hoping that it all crashes so that you can have a better life yourself. Do you know what I mean? It gets a bit weird. It gets into a weird territory. But... Maybe I'm overthinking things and I'm just, you know, I've been spending too much time fasting and drinking green juices. I don't know. But I was watching that live stream with H on H3 podcast thinking this is just awful people after awful people. Just oh, a cesspool of crap. You know I mean, that L.A. scene is just awful. These are grown adults. Some of them are children and shit. Like, what are you doing? Like, what are we doing here? What, what are we doing here? Honestly, that this is something that's happening in real time and somehow being excused because you're friends with... It's just like, oh, yeah, yeah. It's like... <coughs> but anyway, enough of that. Um, no one cares. <laughs> no one cares. At the end of the day, we're still going to run through these clips. We're still going to run up these views. We're still going to get the likes going. <laughs> I feel like such a flipping um, drama whore. I swear to God, I feel awful. But hey, sometimes you have to sell your soul if you want to allow yourself to go. Because I'm, what am I doing this for? I'm doing these streams so I can, you know, fund myself to my flipping trip to Berlin to go to the Bergheim and dance to flipping techno music in the really dark, dingy club in the middle of flipping. Kreisberg or whatnot. Do you know what I mean? That's what I'm basically doing this for. So, you know, it is what it is. Then, you know, I'll get some content out of it. You know, I'll have a good time. <laughs> It'll be some fun people. <laughs> but whatever, man. F it. Whatever, innit? Um, F it, F it, F it, F it. Let's just, let's just, let's just get on in it. 